Well, just as we're getting started, I just want to, Kathy Bagley, I'm the Director of Parks and Rec and Social Youth Services here in town and one of the co-chairs of the early we uh, Weathersfield Early uh, Childhood Collaborative. So I just wanted to say we're here tonight to give you a brief presentation on what um, the Collaborative has been doing recently and also to tell you about a new grant opportunity that's come up through the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving. So we'll get the show on the road. Here we go. Good evening, everybody. I'm Sally Desilly, Assistant Superintendent for Westfield School. And I'm going to turn it over to Kip. This is copies of the presentation. So good evening, and thank you for having us. My name is Kim Bobbin, and I'm the Program Coordinator for the Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative. We have a brief presentation, and we'll have time for questions at the end. The Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative, or WAC, is a diverse group of community members and local organizations. Our members include, but are not limited to, parents, community volunteers, the Town of Weathersfield, Weathersfield Public Schools, the Central Connecticut Health District, local funders and nonprofits. Collectively, we work together to ensure that all Weathersfield children are healthy, ready for school, and connected to the community. <laughs> Data is very important to our work. Tonight, we'd like to highlight one of WEC's partners and to discuss a new grant opportunity. The Hartford Foundation for Public Giving is the community foundation for Hartford and 28 surrounding communities. Made possible by gifts of generous individuals, families, and organizations, the foundation has awarded grants of more than $680 million since its founding in 1925. As Greater Hartford's Community Foundation, they bring together members of our community to share information, understand local problems, and put resources behind effective solutions. Their grants support efforts that promise substantial and lasting community benefit. Their endowment ensures our region's continued progress for generations to come. Their total assets for 2016 were $917 million. For over 25 years, the foundation has prioritized high, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, high quality early childhood programs and system building efforts based on research that confirms that investing in early childhood drives children's <coughs> success in school and in life. Their newish initiative works to align early childhood collaboratives efforts regionally while connecting to local and statewide systems. The foundation has asked Weathersfield to apply for a grant to become part of a new regional network, which includes early childhood organizations that focus on families and children. The network will share data and resources. <coughs> it will have three focus areas, healthy growth and development of children, early childhood education, family support, engagement, and leadership. Invited partners include towns in the Hartford region, the University of Connecticut, Trinity College, Yale University, the Office of Early Childhood, Connecticut Children's Medical Center, and many others. This two-year grant for $30,000 will support a part-time staff member to collect, <coughs> analyze, and share Weathersfield data pertaining to young children and families. The new staff member will also attend meetings of the regional network, update the WEF website, and utilize Constant Contact, which is an email communication tool. WEF is currently using this tool to increase communication and outreach to parents about all the resources available for young families. <coughs> so why apply for this grant? According to data, we know that the demographics in Weathersfield are changing. Our free and reduced lunch numbers have doubled in the last 10 years. The number of children attending preschool is declining. This year, 42 Weatherspill children <coughs> entered kindergarten with no preschool experience. As the state budget tightens, a decrease in state services will increase the need for local assistance. This grant will provide Weatherspill family access to additional resources at no cost to the town. 
This grant will also help us continue the important work of the collaborative. We'd like to conclude with a brief list of WEC's accomplishments. WEC has been successful in connecting many parents with resources. Weathersfield has great resources, but many families don't know about them. This year, WEC was proud to launch our new virtual family resource center, www.weathersfieldchildhood.com. And this website, along with our early childhood resource guide, is helping families to access all that Weathersfield has to offer. In 2017, the town of Weathersfield was awarded a $62,000 grant from the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving. This three-year grant has helped to fund many programs in our town, including our new summer transition to kindergarten program, which we'll showcase at the end. In October, Weathersfield Public Schools was awarded a $50,000 grant from the Connecticut State Department of Education. With this funding, and at no added cost to the town, we have launched a three-day-a-week, two-generational family learning program for parents who speak English as a second language and their children. In 2017, we also received a $5,000 grant from the Liberty Bank Foundation, which we used to host a Yukon Parent Leadership Training Program. In addition, the Weathersfield Mayor's Charity Ball has donated $10,000 to social and youth services for scholarships to Weathersfield families who otherwise could not afford preschool. With this grant, Weathersfield can receive a total of $157,000 that supports early childhood efforts. Uh, we thank you for your time. Any questions? I do, but are we going to wait for the... I was looking at all the grants we got. And I know when we sort of uh, were putting together all day kindergarten, we worked with the board that and figured out what the long term financial impact would be. Um, are we going to do that for this? I know because the grants eventually just run out. Right. I think, <clears throat> excuse me, the way we're looking at it is these grants with the Hartford Foundation, um, they've made a commitment to the region and to the communities, and um, the potential for future grants down the road does exist. Um, as any grant would be, if funds were to run out, a lot of the programs that we're doing, we're recognizing they are grant funded, and they may end up not having to run in the future. That's that's just the way some grants are working. But we think that looking at some of the benefits we're already getting today and over the years through the collaborative, we've been receiving grants through when we first started through the Grassdale Memorial Fund, that kept us going for ten years, and now the Hartford Foundation has come along. So we're looking at it as a a long-term look at how we're moving forward with it. Okay, so you're looking to fund it with grants going forward? At this point, yes, absolutely. Council Lester? Thank you, Mayor. First off, Kim, great job and congratulations for all the wonderful work you and the group does and great turnout of folks. I have two questions I wanted to ask you. One is you gave a little information on what the grant would be for in, in the part-time person and doing a lot of data mining. Maybe you can explore a little bit more or tell us a little bit more about what that individual would be doing. And then real quickly, maybe some priorities for 2018 for WEC as it relates to that. Okay, so sure. The position is an accountability coordinator. I think that when you're Accepting grant funding, you need to be able to prove that you have results, right? So the video's nice, the kids are cute, but does it really matter? Um, so we want someone who can look at our community, look at the data, see where the needs are, and then develop performance measures. So we can tell when we do a program, does it work? And so the accountability coordinator position is one that other collaboratives have, so it's not new, um, but it does really support grant writing in the future. And priorities for 2018 um, is really just continue the work that we're doing. I mean, I'm so touched by the parents who came out this evening, and I think that 
Um, a lot of parents have said that before WEC, they really just didn't know other parents in the community. And so I think it's pretty amazing that people are making connections and friendships. And for those of us who have older kids, we know how much those friendships take you through the years. And so when I think about parents from the Weathersfield Early Childhood um, Co-op, from the Cooperative Nursery School, parents that I knew when my kids are small that I now sit with at the high school, that's valuable to me. And to be able to connect these parents with friends now is going to carry them through a long time, and that's a priority to continue for 2018. Thank you. It's really important work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Councilman Rapp? Thank you. Um, thank you, Kim. Uh, I appreciate everything WEC does. Um, I think uh, it does a great service for our town. You had mentioned a couple of grants uh, that you had already received, um, three or, or four or five of them, I believe, that were up there. <laughs> had any of them ever paid for staff in the past, or were they all program related? Okay. Yeah. The grants over the years that we've received in some um, form or another did pay for some staff time. Okay. If in in looking at this thirty thousand dollar grant, it's fifteen thousand a year, uh, two years, uh, pays for somebody a part time position to maintain the website, the constant contact. I mean, that's not something that can stop in two years. If unfortunately the grant is not renewed, um, my concern would be paying staff salary on a grant and not having the you know trust that it would be there two years from now. Um, what would be WEC's uh, course of action in two years for that position? So this grant is actually uh, fiscal agent would be the Board of Education. And so uh, we have other staff um, that is funded through a grant, and so the person would be hired with the expectation as a grant for the position. If the grant didn't continue after two years, uh, the person would be you know that up front. Um, however, the Board of Ed and, and WAC has really talked about uh, increasing our network and our partnership with the Harvard Foundation. Uh, you saw the commitment to the different towns, um, different nonprofit organizations. Uh, they're very committed. They're one of our neighboring partners, and. I think we also need to talk about what does this look, uh, we need to be realistic about what might happen two years if we don't have funding, but I also think they are very open to how can we grow this partnership and look beyond uh, these grants to larger grants of their systemic in supporting our needs here in Wethersfield. So this grant uh, would be, uh, this person would be hired through the Board of Education. Uh, we do need a collaborative decision from both the Town Council and the Board of Ed um, to move forward with the grant because it's really collaborative uh, network to support our families or young children within town. Um, but I think that uh, really it's exciting to think about how we can grow this collaborative <coughs> partnership with all of our partners, uh, both sitting in the audience, but also those mentioned on the PowerPoint and how we can maybe utilize those partners, uh, grant funds from other partners and the Hart Foundation to even grow this program larger. So that's really kind of a fun, exciting question to look at. Mm -hmm. Thank you for answering that, Sally. And from the Board of Ed aspect, would this position be an administrative position? Uh, no, it would not be an administrative position. It would it be a part-time. Part-time? Uh, yeah. Is there benefits for the position? No, because it would be part-time, there would not be benefits. Okay. And then we, and we would post it as a grant fund position. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? Deputy Mayor? Uh, <coughs> Sally, uh, this is a regional approach. Have other towns been doing this already for a while? Most definitely, yeah. And has uh, the Hartford Foundation been funding them over the years? They have been funding uh, di many different towns, uh, both collaboration from the Board of Ed and the Town Council. Um, part of the research they've looked at, uh, and Kim would know it more in depth than I would, but really to really network uh, those services within town and have to break down the silos between the town and the Board of Ed. And so they are uh, committed to um, building those, in, those different supports in town to help um, towns really provide those services um, in a way that makes sense and sustainable. So yes, this is, uh, you saw in the previous slide, uh, we are one of many towns um, taking advantage of this opportunity and I do think there's additional opportunities out there. But what those other towns have been around in two years, 
our foundation has been funding them for more than two years. Correct. Which means more than likely we'll continue to fund Correct. our town as well. That's our okay. feeling. Other questions? Council of Latina? Thank you so much. Um, wondering if there's any kind of commitment beyond the two years. Are they open to doing something a little longer? Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, they have kind of their requirements and the way they operate through grants. Um, if you look at their history, you look at their website, their commitment to other towns over time. Uh, I think what they're looking for is a commitment from Wethersfield in addition. Uh, they, for them to invest their time, their finances, and their structure, um, they want us to be an active partner in their regional networks. And uh, learn. they want to learn from us, well, we want to learn from them, how we can share resources. Um, it's been uh, through the work of WEC. Uh, we've been able to tap into a lot of different, uh, whether they're state agencies, nonprofits that are out there, um, but sometimes it just helps with networking where all those, all the work people are doing around the state and bringing those services to connect to Weathersfield. Um, so most definitely, I, I think there's a greater commitment out there. Is this um, a town match or is this just a straight up grant? This, this has no match. And then after the two years, we have to go to a round of trying to um, get them to approve it again. Uh, so they haven't notified uh, us officially what would look after two years, but there are other avenues of funding through the Hartford Foundation. Uh, there's this regional network grant, but also uh, our other uh, funding from the Hartford Foundation comes in a different avenues. So there are different ways to approach funding um, through the Hartford Foundation. And are there other towns around us that we might be able to share this position with? I would say that we have uh, double or triple the amount of work for this part-time person to do uh, here in Wethersfield. Um, while we have some of these communication tools and, and data up and running, uh, there is, you know, we, we need some additional staff members to maintain that and increase the communication. Uh, so there will be opportunities to network and learn from each other, but this person would be solely um, focused on weather skilled services, um, but also networking with surrounding communities. Does that make sense? It does. I'm just a little concerned that after two years that this person becomes such an integral part of keeping data and accountability for what we're trying to do here that we may find ourselves in a, a quandary. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think anybody has a crystal ball between now and two years. Uh, however, uh, there is definitely a commitment from uh, the collaborative around keeping this grant funded um, and also results-based. Um, we don't take this lightly and we want to make sure that we can see the results as a result of the collaborative and some of that was results we shared here today. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Councilor Forrest? Thanks, Amy. Um, First of all, you guys are tremendous, obviously. I've been on the collaborative for the last four years, so uh, certainly near and dear to my heart. But one of the things I think has been most impressive is the database uh, concept of understanding the programs that we put in place are actually making a positive effect. And to that extent, I was wondering if you knew of, or if you could share, whether it's now or later, the correlation between uh, pre-kindergarten activities such as this and then success at school. Um, is there any data on that type of? In Weathersfield? Um, it could be, no, it doesn't have to be in Weathersfield, but just on the fact of for the effect of a program like this. And what, I mean, we had talked in the past, but I don't remember the data off the top of my head. Um, admittedly, whether it's, uh, you know, we have uh, you know, a lower percentage of students that are, uh, you know, maybe need special ed services and or um, better discipline and behavior in classrooms because of the, uh, because they're already, been in that type of a situation, if it's better test scores, if it, you know, all those types of, you know, sort of positive or matrix that we use that um, would show a correlation or a non-correlation as the case may be uh, between having, putting forth these efforts in a pre-kindergarten situation and then how it develops into like, let's say those first two or three or four or five years in, in actual schooling. And that, that was always my impression looking at the data but I don't remember off the top of my head, so it might be interesting. You know, not a, I was served on the Board of Ed, so we were sort of a little bit <coughs> rolled up our sleeves. We were a little bit more into it, but this council probably you know, has so many other things there on their plate as well, so the correlation data might be important to talk about, about why we do this. 
So there was just an article the other day in the Hartford Current about how other states are really starting to look at early childhood. So there has been data and research done where they look at kids over time. Um, I had asked Sally at one point, could we look at Weathersfield kids who didn't go to preschool and kind of do a cohort of kids who did go to preschool? And Sally's response was, we can't because they're always moving, right? So we don't know our kids who didn't go to preschool. Kids are all over the place, which interestingly enough, that's why the regional approach is so important. Um, Mike Emmett had said to me one day, you know, a lot of our students come to us from Hartford. So whether or not Weathersfield kids are ready doesn't matter if children are coming to us from Hartford. So us being able to collaborate with Hartford to get our kids ready in the region is very important. Um, but to answer your question, yes, there's been a lot of data and a lot of research that's been done over the long term for early childhood. And we know scientifically, data, economically, that before the age of three is when stuff really matters. And it's really hard to control in a town before the age of three. But we got one here tonight, so <laughs> we're doing a pretty good job pulling them in. Um, a year ago when Martha Keneally and I came up and presented, Martha was our accountability coordinator, we referenced the Heckman equation. So Heckman is an international economist who a year ago said that for every dollar you put into early childhood, you get seven back. He's adjusted it now to say for every dollar you put in, you get 13 back. Um, so even if you look at the 10,000 from the mayor's charity ball and times that by 13, I think that's a pretty good return on investment. Could you explain, like, what, what is that, re how does that return on investment show itself? It doesn't show itself in the dot, you know, in income to the Board of Education, but probably so, in the expense area. Right, so inequity starts early, right? So if you have kids who are not starting out with the same plane, it continues all the way through life. So there's data that says that kids who aren't reading on level by grade three, they laughed at me at a PTO meeting. I said they wind up in prison, but, but there is data to show that, um, that that really is the case, that when they measure kids over time, kids who aren't reading on grade level by grade three wind up with lower employment, you know, lower work skills, um, graduation. lower graduation rates. So early is better. And there's national data out there to support that. Any other questions? Tough crowd, you guys. <laughs> I'd like to thank you for your presentation, and um, we will take this up later in the meeting. Thanks for your time. Thanks. So now we'll move into the public comment section of the meeting. Public comments are limited to five minutes, please. <coughs> Do we have anybody who would like to speak? Good evening, my name is Mary Kay Jensen. Um, yes, yes, please. Let me bring Will here. Um, here in Weathersfield. And I am here in support of the grant that Kim was just uh, talking about. Um, there was so many questions about what happens um, like in two years and when it's over. And um, and I, I, I get nervous when I hear that, that people wouldn't vote for this, for this free money that we're given because of what could potentially happen in two years. And um, I think data is so important to how WAC leads um, and makes decisions. Um, how we can advocate for our children, how we get the word out, how we um, do programs. Um, I can't imagine not having somebody, another Martha. That is, that, we had 10 years of people doing research before we started, I feel like, really um, getting on a roll with um, preschool and all these programs are running. There were people that were, before I was here, long before I was here, doing it for 10 years. And all they were really doing was collecting data, um, studies, a book. I was given a book this big, and it was just data on our, on our children. Um, and that data helped us 
do everything we're doing right now with PEP and with the Mayor's Ball and, and letting us know things like um, the children in town and preschool and, and who's not going to preschool. It's helped us um, communicate better with the Board of Ed and with the Town Council and uh, Parks and Rec. And we couldn't operate without data. And so I don't really feel um, like I care too much about what's going to happen after when I see right now and things that we can do right now with that money and things we can learn about our children and our community. Um, that's gold. That's amazing. Um, and that will propel us to do everything we need to do in two years and set us up for something better. Um, Kim is a hustler. In two years, she'll figure it out. She's, she knows everyone in the state. She's a talker. I feel like we're all, this is not my first rodeo here talking about early childhood and please say this and fund that and keep whack and keep whack. I mean, it's always, every two years, so we're always begging you, not you, it's just the town, to, um, to keep whack going and to, to bring in an early childhood coordinator. So we always have this fight. And so my position is to take the money, cheer, tell all the neighbors, rah, 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 Weathersfield supports our children, and um, let's do some great research and fund some awesome things and um, talk at the annual WEC meeting about all the stuff that happened this year. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Uh, Good evening, my name is Nerva Mustafik and uh, I live at, in Wethersfield 67 back on the road. Uh, I'm here tonight to say something about family program that I am part of. Um, pardon my English, so obviously I'm part of the pro program because I'm, I want to uh, bring my English at a better level, which is uh, giving me opportunity here. And also I joined because of my daughter. Uh, she, she is a three years old, and uh, now she has a lot of friends that are from China, from Albania, from all over the world. Uh, usually, when I just came here six years ago, uh, I was just in my community, so I just knew Bosnians. I didn't know nobody else. I was learning English on my own. So now, from this perspective, I'm thinking, if I just had that, like five, six years ago, uh, maybe now I wouldn't have to say every time, pardon my English, pardon my English, because I had two daughters and I was not able to go and go to work. So I had to stay with them. So as many of other mothers, they have to raise their children and, uh, and there are so many mothers in, in, in this program right now that are highly educated <coughs> in, their, in their born countries, but here, like they still uh, are having a problem to help their child to do their homework, which is which is really hard, hard. So like being highly educated and not being able to help your child to do the homework, uh, I can do that now because I had a couple of years, so I could learn English, so I can help my daughter now, which is in kindergarten. But there are so many other mothers that are in this program and. Uh, we started like now for a couple of months and their English and I hope my English also is improving and our children are playing together, getting to know each other and uh, one point uh, from my point, from my perspective, I think we expect, we expect our children to get uh, like to respect each other in school, to be respectful and nice to each other and they see like all different faces, different colors, different religions and then they have so many questions, and sometimes they bully each other. But this uh, kind of, why, why wouldn't they? Because families are closed in their small communities. But programs like this brings us together. So I have, a, I have opportunity now to, to get to know so many, so many people from different places. Because, and we are here together. We have something similar, but we, otherwise, maybe we would never met each other, except in school in front of the doors, but still, that's just, you know, having a lot of prejudice before you just get the opportunity to speak and to say something about yourself and listen to the others. Thank you.
Thank you. Hi, Jenny Barazzi, 116 Charter Road. Um, <clears throat> I have worked with WEC for four years. I um, am one of the grant funded positions, um, and I am the PEP, the Parent Leadership and Training Facilitator. Um, WEC has done amazing things, and, and as they talked about, the data has already been being collected for 10 years. If we don't accept this grant and this amazing partnership, that worry that you had, Mr. Rell, about what we would do when, when we couldn't accept that or collect that data anymore, that would be today and tomorrow instead of two years down the line. So Martha and WEC and everybody has been collecting rich data on our children, on what we do as a town, and has built programs around that. And this is an opportunity to accept a role, a leadership role in a partnership that will help us continue to collect more data, to um, build upon what we've already started. Um, and Mirma is a member of our first graduating PEP class, a member of the two gener generational learning. It's affecting real families, real people in town. It is, it makes us look good, it makes us feel good. We are really improving the quality of life for real families and real people. And, and building an amazing relationship with the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving because they're giving their money to us and entrusting us to do a good job with it because we have in the past. And we've been able to do things with the WET Collaborative that not every collaborative has been able to do. Um, Weathersfield has pushed the envelope further and has been able to deliver the real results and the real families and have really built a stronger community because of it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Hello. Um, pardon me, I'm a little nervous. Um, my name is Tamisha Cologne. I live at 45 Treat Road here in Weathersfield. Um, proudly, I am so happy to live in this town. It's such a wonderful town. I am born and raised um, from Harvard. I went to Harvard schools and so I graduated from high school. And then I moved away far hard to Stanford where I knew absolutely nobody because I wanted to get away. Um, I ended up coming back and years down the road got pregnant with twin girls. I lived with my mom for their first year and I wanted to get out of Hartford so bad yet again because I didn't want my daughters to be raised in the town that I was raised in. I wanted better for them. So I moved here to Wethersfield and um, I've been raising my girls ever since. They're five years old now, uh, Haley and Harley. They are both special needs, both autistic. And they went to school, pre-K three, pre-K four, and in kindergarten here in Wethersfield. And because of that, my daughters, who the doctor said, are not gonna have a chance to really talk to me, or to tell me that they love me, or to show me love, or to read, <laughs> um, or to eat with a spoon until they're like six or seven. They are doing amazing work because of the schools here in Wethersfield. I'm one of the proud graduates of the PEP program. Um, I was so happy to be a part of that with Ms. Kim Bobbin and with Ms. Janine Baresi. It was uh, empowering for me to be in a room with uh, other women who were mothers just like me and had the same struggles just like me and could have the same conversations about how to enrich the town that we're raising our children in. Um, I'm here to say that I support <coughs> Kim and anything and everything that she does because she's just doing so many wonderful things for our town. I look here in this crowd and um, I see a see of people that I know. I can familiarize myself with some people here in this town. I don't have family, but I see people that I can go around in town and say hi to because I've known them through programs that WEC has um, produced. My daughter is no people. They go to the playground and they can't say hi because the autism, but kids come up to them and say hi, and that makes me feel amazing. Um, so I just want to say that this town is awesome and Kim is doing an amazing job with everything she's doing and I do support this. Thank you, everyone. Happy New Year and have a good evening.
Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? I'm from across the river. <laughs> um, when I was uh, approached Shawnee Baldwin, when would I was you approached, just, would you state your name? And Shawnee Baldwin, oh, Shawnee Baldwin from Glastonbury, across the river. Um, when I was approached to um, work for the Y for this program, it was a grant program. So if you're worried about people not coming forward to be part of the grant program, if you're worried about things running out, I don't think you need to worry about that. Um, I've loved children for a very long time, and in my short time here from in October till now, um, the young children who come in here, the moms who come in here, this is a very worthwhile um, program and position, and I thought it was going to end in February. And Glad it's going to go till May, but um, I don't think you need to worry about where if some money's going to come from. People will come forward and, and give it to you. You're doing wonderful things. Thank you, <coughs> Tom. Well, good evening, Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walkadel Road. <coughs> I don't think there's any debate tonight about whether it's a good program or not. It uh, appears to be doing everything you could possibly want it to do. Uh, that being said, I think some of the questions that are being raised concerning funding, let's say, for example, the grant money dries up in two years. I would venture to say this room will be filled with 100 or 200 parents demanding that the $30,000 be put forward out of the town budget. It's only $15,000 a year, and it's a $100 million a year budget. It's not a big issue. Well, it is a big issue because these become incremental. And I think if you look back 10, 15 years, you would see the total number of town employees and Board of Ed employees was much lower than it is today, and yet the population is pretty much flat. So the programs tend to transition from a grant program to a town-funded program, and I think that's the concern. So I would like to see some, some statement tonight saying, yes, we'll accept the grant, but everybody has to realize that when the grant money dries up, it's not going to be funded by the town of Willisville. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Anybody else? Bob? Good evening. Robert Young, 20 Cotton Road. Um, great thing. But I don't believe we can afford it two years from now, as Tom is saying. Um, we've seen other projects that came in for short term, and all of a sudden, when the money dries up or they want to expand and, and it goes beyond what money they have, the town ends up kicking in. And we've already kicked in for pre-kindergarten. We already have K through 12, plus we have the Transitional Academy, which is open to those <coughs> students that are 20 up to 21 years old, and then they go to the state. And here we are. We're constantly paying. Someone said that weather school supports our children, should support our children. I think that all the citizens support the children and the school system. Unfortunately, the Board of Education and the town council have upped the ante so much on the citizens. Look at tonight. How much time the BOE has spent on this issue? We have the superintendent sitting here, who's probably spent a lot of hours on this. We have the assistant superintendent, who's spent a lot of hours on this. We have Kathy Bagley, head of the Parks and Recreation, has spent a lot of time on it. It's not even our project yet and they've spent a lot of time on it. What do they do on their normal jobs? That's something to think about. Because if you bring this program in, they're going to be involved in that as well, continuing. And they're going to be, we're the going to be the losers. 
if they go back and took care of their school, like the K through 12 or pre whatever, back to uh, the academy and did their jobs, I think we should be all happy with that. But now to bring on more project is wrong. We cannot, we cannot afford that. And I believe the citizens of Weathersfield have ponied up a lot of money for our education. You can't say we're cheap, but we definitely have overpaid. And now this would be more overpaid. If we've all kept up with the normal everyday news, we are in a, we are in a recession. We are in a bad time in the state. You're begging the state of Connecticut for money. Wait till next year. Wait till the year after. And then we look at the state. You know, we, we have an out. What are, what's it called? Our people are leaving more than people are coming. The people that are leaving are our billionaires and millionaires. Our normal people are leaving. Our retirees, they're taking their cash and going. And the ones who are coming in don't have much. And where is that going to leave all of us? You're in your, I suspect you're in your budget process for, for the next fiscal year. I really don't recall hearing too much talk about it. But we, we, have, now a, we have a problem with our headcount. We've lost a lot of people. We're going to continue losing people. Um, there's articles in the Hartford Current. You can go read them for yourself about all, all of this that isn't good for Weathersfield or the state of Connecticut. Bringing on more projects is not going to help us out. So I would urge you to, if you take it, you, you should put in some kind of a clause that it's dead on arrival after they run out of their money. Because we cannot continue paying for all of this. It's, it's just too much. And as many of the citizens are leaving with money in their pockets, who's going to be left to pay for it? Thank you. Thank you. Yes? <coughs> Good evening, Gus Colantonio, 60 Morrison Avenue. And uh, I hate to say, but uh, I tend to agree with Tom and, and Bob. Uh, I had bad experience with the Board of Education, and, and I like the program that they talked about it. But we're talking about only $30,000. It seems to me with the Board of Education budget, they should be able to look at that budget at any time and come up with $30,000, $40,000, $50,000. And, and keep on going the way they are or the way they want to go. That's really asinine the way, you know, grants here, grants there, we spend so much time that the money that we get from the grants and basically the time that we spend, is it really worth it? Why am I saying that? I think the Board of Education is very educational, very smart, and, and it can say anything they want. And I still go back probably 10, 15 years ago when my daughter was in kindergarten and they wanted to hold her back from going to first grade. Can you imagine that? We had a discussion here and there and everywhere. And we decided, no, you go ahead. And a couple of years later, I found out that the only reason they wanted to hold her back is to save somebody's, you know, a teaching job. They were creating a transition unit so they could save that position. And that's crazy to me. When the Board of Education, from the top to the bottom or whatever, puts ahead of the kids, you know, basically salaries and, and, and jobs, so that's bad. When I believe that the first priority should be the kids and not necessarily the upper echelon, the way, they, the way they talk. And by the way, I'm a foreigner too. I didn't go to kindergarten, but I made it. Thank you. Thank you, Gus. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? <coughs> Hi, Casey White, 91 Center Street. 
I'm here um, with many of the parents and people here to also support this grant. It would be bananas to not go for it. It's money right now. I mean, in two years, if we run out of money, we face that problem then. Um, Take the money and do great things with it. WEC has a great track record. The more I learn about that group, the more impressed I am. And honestly, I have gotten a little choked up hearing about people talk because um, raising little kids is really hard. And you need all the help that you can get. And I'm so happy to hear the stories of people who have connected with the programs. Um, you know, I wrote down notes. I, I wanted to talk about how it's smart to share resources and data regionally and how increasing communication to families is so important. And honestly, the West website is the best town website spots available in Mothersfield. Uh, we should be following the example of Kim and her team and the programs that she's running as an example of communicating with residents, providing opportunities, and really um, looking at the needs of the people who often get ignored. Little kids can't vote. They will have a voice in choosing who makes these decisions, but their lives are impacted, maybe for the rest of their life, based on the programs that they're offered and the care that is being paid attention to by the community to them. Um, the investment uh, estimate that Kim offered from The Economist, the $1 investment in early childhood, yields $13 fast. I mean, I think any parent understands that that just makes sense. You see, if a kid gets good food, if they get good care, if they're loved, they're a happier, better learner, they get along with people, they can solve problems, and that carries on through their entire life. And that is exactly what will happen if we keep finding money for these programs. This is not paid for by the taxpayers. Um, and, and town staff who are applying for these grants and planning for these things, that is just part of the job. That's part of the job of getting money. That's totally fine with me. Honestly, I would be fine with paying more taxes if, if we did decide to put more money into this. That's not on the table right now. But just in terms of this grant, yes, we should, we should get it. It makes total sense. And um, it's just, it's smart for the kids and it's smart for the town. It's really a win-win. So please, let's go for this and let's do this. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Say no one. We'll Excuse on. me. Oh. I have three. Uh, I'll tell you, we have three uh, people who sent emails: uh, Melissa Mazinski, Deborah Truex, and uh, Bonnie Smith, in favor of the program. Thank you. And now we'll close public comment and move into council reports. Do we have any council reports tonight? Okay, moving into council comments. Do we have any council comments tonight? Councilor Forrest? Just very briefly, a thank you, you know, through the town manager to all the town workers who had to work on a lot of those Christmas mornings, right? I, the plows were out there, and hopefully they worked out the people that have kids and people that don't, and they did their thing, but... They were out there on Christmas morning, and they were out there on the other day, salt and sanding, and the roads are, it was cold out there, and I just thank them, thank them for it from, from the townspeople, whether well, hopefully that gets up to them. And I, I know it's just a statement, but it is well thought of, and for what it's worth, and they were driving by around the towns, I was thinking of them and their families around the town. Thank you. Make sure they appreciate it. Along those same lines, uh, Councilman Forrest, I want to thank the uh, volunteer fire department uh, members. I live within uh, um, a stone's throw of uh, the firehouse on Main Street, and I see Kevin Hill, my neighbor. I'm sure you hear it as well. The siren goes off, and uh, lately with the cold weather, um, there's been calls for CO um, detectors going off, bursted uh, water pipes, um, even small fires. Um, going on this cold, bitter cold, which is only going to get worse by the end of the week, is wreaking havoc on a lot of the old infrastructure in uh, the MBC pipes as well as the uh, homeowners pipes. Um, and our lots of firefighters are um, keeping the call going out there and uh, serving the public uh, 
in temperatures that I wouldn't want to be out in, but they are. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <coughs> Any other comments? Okay. Town Manager's report, please. Uh, I have nothing to see. Town Clerk, do you have any communications? <laughs> no. Thank you. We'll move into Council Action. First order of business is B3A, the approval of a grant from the Hartford Foundation for Public Living. Do I have a motion? Yes, Mayor. Uh, I make a motion to accept the grant by the Hartford Foundation for Public Living for the Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborate and authorize the town manager to sign the grant on the applicant. Second. 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 Thank you. Is there any discussion? Councilor Lesser. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to thank all the people that came out and to support this. And the data is overwhelming that kids get an earlier start and they get preschool. Uh, they go much further than kids that don't. And I think it would be foolish for us not to accept this grant and I appreciate Kim, Janine, and all the people that work in the group. You guys do an amazing job. So thank you again. Thank you. Any other discussion? Councilor Forrest. Just generally with a second what Councilor Lesser said, but um, you know there's been some concerns and rightly brought up about you know whether or not we're gonna start a program that we might have to take on some not liability is the right word, but some funding possibilities moving on. But as someone who was the liaison for the four, last four years from the Board of Education, and even worked with them prior to that, the, the idea which this board probably, or this council probably doesn't see all the time, is that this is an, not only is WEC over a decade old in this town, but this relationship specifically with the Harvard Foundation is a growing one, not a diminishing one. And the idea that the Harvard Foundation looks at is they want to see stable programs in a community that over time is dedicated to the process of data collection, and just like we do in many finance and business decisions, is, is a data-driven decision. And because of that, um, this $30,000 grant for team number two, I would foresee being greater. Uh, the, the two, the, the, the multi-businesses that have contributed to this and the funding sources will increase and not decrease, because you'll see the community from both sides. So um, I have little, uh, and not only that, but even at times when it got really bad over the last two years, when some of the funding sources dried up, the group was even able to find new and greater revenue sources, which even shows more of an uh, indication of the drive of this particular group, not just the group, but the community as represented by the group, um, toward uh, providing um, this particular segment of our population, the under pre-K, uh, with an opportunity and opportunities that I think are even going to grow and expand as we continue forward with this partnership. So, strike this down now would be poor judgment, in my opinion. And we certainly will be going for it. Um, and I look forward to even greater and better programs in the future because of the decision we make here today. Thank you. Any other comments? I would like to just say that I personally see the benefit of preschool three children went to preschool and uh, definitely helped them in beginning their education. Um, and I think to turn down a grant from the Hartford Foundation that has almost a billion dollars that, um, it, you know, would be foolish. And uh, I, too, support this um, and hope other counselors will as well. Um, if there's no other comment, I'll call to vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Anybody abstaining? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you again for coming out. Appreciate it. <laughs> Next item of business is B3B. Fees for bingo games, bars, and raffles. Do I have a motion? Yes, a uh, motion to adopt the fees for the bingo, bazaars, and raffles as recommended by the Williamsfield Police Department. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. You're not going to stay around for the bingo thing? <laughs> 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 okay, town manager, do you have information on this? Uh, just what was in the packet, the uh, state changed the law that divesting itself of the oversight of this program with the local police departments and, uh, and established a maximum fee schedule which the police department is recommending for adoption at the local level 
uh, the administrative division of the police department will oversee the program. Uh, there are certain exceptions. So the existing bingo license at the Weathersfield Senior Club will just go to the town and they'll have to apply once, but it will be same with parent teacher organization, there are certain exemptions. So um, what has gone on in the community in the past will just continue in the future, just any new licenses or uh, any new activities will have to come to the department. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions? Deputy Mayor? Uh, just uh, in case, I just want to turn out here uh, uh, look at all the revenue. We get to keep all the revenue, we don't have to get any back to the state. We do. Surprised you're going to look I'm either giving up liability or <laughs> 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 responsibility. I was reading through and I thought the, the, the original one, the town stepped apart, the state stepped apart, and now I didn't see the state in there, and I didn't know if piece of the action on the other end of the contract. And we tried to find how much we have paid to the state for these types of licenses, and it's been almost not a good yeah. The amount of it's our salary? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> right. Approve the minutes of December 4, 2017. Second. Do have a second? Second. Are there any corrections, changes, or deletions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Anybody abstaining? Motion passes. The meeting minutes of December 18. Make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of December 18, 2017. Second. Are there any changes, corrections, deletions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any, any abstain? Yes, we have one abstain. He wasn't here. Okay. Very good. Then we will go into public comment. Public comment is five minutes. Does anything, anybody like to speak? Mr. Bowen's on now. Gasco Antonio 60 Morrison Avenue. At the last meeting, I, uh, I overheard, I guess, that basically uh, I've been asking a lot of questions and I got all the answers regarding the famous stop sign. Since I can recall, the only thing I got for an answer is that there are too many stop signs in time and we're not going to put any more. That's what sticks in my mind. But although I, I must have I must say that I really did get something uh, with the stop sign minutes and there was a man in the west one direction. It took me three to ten minutes, but now there is a little sign on the that says oncoming traffic does not stop. Which was good. Now I asked many times and I refer to the the police report where it says that the stop sign again in the westbound direction at the intersection of Orchard and Morrison Avenue is there because of the intersectional sign distance. That's what it says. And subsequent to that, uh, the town manager or staff said they, they measure it. And it's 290 feet. That's why you need a stop sign. Tifton Road and Morrison Avenue after they reconstructed the sidewalk, is only 232 feet down grade. And I'm saying, why on one side we need a stop sign and the other side we don't? I'm ask, I have asked many times, I never got an answer. I've also asked the question basically that on Hillcrest and Orchard, they have three stop signs. I wonder why. Now, 
staff, the staff, the members, I guess, of the, the staff part of engineering, they, they did take some measurements, and there is nothing wrong with that intersection. But the question that I had, why did you waste time to take those measurements if you never had any intention to do anything? Never got an answer. And Morrison Avenue is the only street where we have, I guess, signs. You know, they, they are in the back of the sidewalk, they are between the sidewalk and, and the curb, and they are all over creation. I asked the question, why there is no really consistency at all? I never got an answer. I sit in my living room and I see a lot of times the Lamour trucks going back in the eastbound direction. I rarely see them in the westbound direction. Why? Because I guess they want to eliminate the, the light at George, or they want to eliminate the stop sign on Hillcrest. That's why they come down Morrison Avenue. Now, years ago, Morrison Avenue never connected to Cyrus Dean. And in 1955, it opened. So at that particular time, Morrison Avenue did not have any true traffic. Now we have twice as many cars as your question, I ask the question, why do you think is that? I never get an answer. At least, maybe I'm getting older, I forgot. But how, how long does it take me really to refresh my, my memory? You know, I've been here for many years, and I, I have experience now, and I, and I think that the people in government are not accountable for anything. The things that they were wrong on Morrison Avenue during construction, and I was there, and I saw it. How many construction projects go through Weathersfield that nobody really looking at it? And you know, sometimes we wonder why are the roads falling apart? I mean, as you know, as you remember, maybe the members, some of the members don't know, but Morrison Avenue, where they widened the road, they had to do it over again because they did not build based on the plans. Also, before they backfilled the curbing, they had to stop and do some job because the contractor was not doing the right job. As a guy, I always question that, and I'm sorry, but I don't see any accountability in town government. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else would like to speak? Mr. Young? Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Coppin Mill Road. Didn't surprise me how you folks vote, and I know as we get into two years from now when there's no money coming from the Hartford, whatever it's called, Foundation for Giving, um, I'm sure I know how you folks will vote at that time for continuation. Uh, but anyway, this morning in the Hartford Current was an article called Boom, Not Filling, Not Filling State Coffers. And you know, I'm not going to stand up here and talk about the, the one dollar that's invested in education for um, WECC uh, will get me $13. I, I can't equate to that. I'd really like to see the analysis and how someone came up with that. But to just come up here and talk about it as though it's a great hit that you're going to get, you know, it, it, it makes makes one question, what the heck's going on here? But what I will tell you is, right from the Hartford Current, it says the state officials say there are multiple reasons why tax revenue isn't also increasing, including the numerous high-paying financial jobs at those, at those uh, financial firms that left and the departure of some wealthy investors who have also moved out of the state. Lieutenant Governor Kevin Sullivan is not optimistic that the state will be collecting huge amounts of capital gains through the personal income tax anytime soon. I'm sure you all read this, but I'm sure some haven't. And then it goes on about the census. Uh, the US Census reports uh, recently reported that more than 22,000 state residents left for other states last year. We lost 22,000 from this other. And then if we look at this other article over here, they're saying the state lost um, 6,200 jobs 
in October. Slightly improved revision uh, with the initial loss of 6,600, which meant they went up. And then since June, the state has lost more than 15,000 jobs. I mean, I caught this when reading this paper. Heck, that's a lot of jobs. We're going to surpass 30,000 this year. And we've lost people from Weathersfield. And so hasn't every other town across the state has lost people. And it's not necessary, and I'm sure a number of them were in foreclosure. I'm sure a number of them were in, were heading into foreclosure and they had to go. And then of course you got the wealthy ones who just packed up, jumped on their airplane and took off, leaving us with what they left us. But what did they leave us? We left the mess that you folks have created over all these years. You folks have voted constantly to increase. Let's buy dump trucks. Let's buy backhoes. Let's buy fire engines. Let's buy Chromebooks on credit. Who in the world is going to pay that? Oh, the manager will tell us, oh, those are fixed costs. They just automatically go into the budget and nobody knows and cares. It's just a number there that has to be in the equation to come up with the middle rate. And done deal. Thanks to you folks. Thanks to your predecessors. Turf, another one that you mortgage. Sullivan, Lieutenant, the former Lieutenant Governor Sullivan is not predicting a big jump in the January payments either. And longtime economist Donald Ke Kepler Smith said that the state's budget problems go far beyond Wall Street because Connecticut's job growth has been stagnant and lacks far behind all other states in New England. Sorry about that. The fewer people work, fewer are paying taxes, and the deficit keeps getting wider. That's what we're looking at, folks. You know, the last time I was here, you voted in favor of Chromebooks. Who cares? It's only money. The only decent person that thought about it was Mr. Spinella. He voted no. I think that was great of him. It was pretty, it took a lot of courage for him to do that. I think he voted that way on some other issues also. And we need some more people like him sitting up here. Because all the rest of you, like Mr. Ralph, he suggests let's buy Chromebooks on time payment. You're a good Republican. Thank you. I think I think you're called a rhino. I think you're called a rhino, Mr. Ralph. Thank you, Mr. Young. So anyway, Five uh, minutes these, 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 these great art, this great article spells out a lot of great things. Twenty seconds to conclude. Oh, I'm just going to wrap it up. At the, no, I'll just leave. Okay. I'll just leave okay. there. Well, listen, you. you're going to have to face this with all, with all the goody goody things you're doing. You're going to have to face it. And if you retire along the way, or you retire at the end of two years from this position, um, your name is still stuck onto it. I mean, look at the poor management we had over the last X amount of years with our former mayor, who just who just resigned. Um, incredible, incredible legacy he has left us. Look what we have to have. Think about that. Thank you very much, Mayor. Nice to come down and talk to you every now and then. Thank you. You know I'll be back. I know, that's good. Uh, anyone else that would like to speak? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Good night.